Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Video to Studio, and today I'm gonna share with you how to create the checkbox title in DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna see together how to create the design and the animation, and how to create a custom tool that allow you to switch that box from empty to cross to check. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so in DaVinci Resolve, we're now on the edit page, and the first thing we want to do is bring a new Fusion composition in our timeline. Then we can move over to Fusion, once in Fusion, we're gonna start by bringing a null background and we're gonna link the output of that background to the media out. Then I'm just gonna reduce the alpha channel down to zero so we can transparency. And then here I'm gonna add a text node and then we're gonna link the output of that text node to the background. In the text, we're gonna write whatever we want. So right here, I'm gonna write checkbox for DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna change the font for pop-in and reduce the size a little bit. Now you might be wondering why I've put my text right here and there is so much space between my background and my text. It's because we're gonna need quite a lot of space to create that checkbox function right here. I'm gonna share with you quite a few things, basically how to create a dynamic checkbox that can switch from empty, cross and check. So we'll be creating some custom control and have a different uh, node structure. So we're gonna see that together. But if you don't want to go through the hassle, we just released a pack on our website called list and bullet points that contain a bunch of different bullet point and list that you can use with those kind of functionality built in that you can use directly from the edit page. So if you know that you're gonna use those kind of assets a lot, I will highly recommend you to check it out on our website. But right now let's get back to the tutorial and let me show you how you can do it yourself. So we're gonna start by bringing here a new background and we're gonna select here the ellipse to create our ellipse shape. We're gonna link the width with the height with an expression by selecting expression and then linking the width to the height. And I'm gonna link the output of my background here to my background one. Then here in ellipse, I'm gonna untick solid and I'm just gonna change the border width to 0.005. We're gonna reduce here the height to 0.05 and make that circle smaller. We're then just gonna move it here to the side of all text. And now we're gonna go over to background and we're gonna change that color from black to white. Now I'm gonna go back to my text and the first thing that I want to do is here, anchor it to the left side. So here, if I were to add some text, as you can see, it's gonna be pushed from the center and it's not gonna be aligned with the checkbox. We don't want that. We want to make sure that when we add some text, it's just added on the right side. So I'm gonna anchor here to the left and readjust the position right there. Now, if I write anything, as you can see, it's just added to the right and we don't have some displacement happening here to the left. All right, so we've created our box. Now I'm gonna create the first check mark. So I'm gonna copy the ellipse and I'm gonna copy the background and I'm gonna paste them right here. And then I'm gonna link the output of that background to the merge. Now I'm gonna bring in a polygon and I'm gonna link the output of that polygon here to the ellipse. And I'm gonna draw here the check mark. So I'm just gonna zoom in. So I'm gonna zoom in by a little bit just to see a bit more what I'm doing. I'm gonna go in the middle of the circle in terms of height and on the left side, but not completely touching the border. I'm gonna click and basically write my first point. Then I'm gonna hold shift on my keyboard and that's just gonna allow me to create another point but making sure that the line stays straight. And so now basically I'm gonna do the exact same thing but this time at the bottom of the circle right there. Again, always holding shift the whole time to make sure that my line stays straight. And then I'm gonna reach outside of the circle about 45 degree out right there. And here I'm gonna just create my last point. Now you can go to border width and you can adjust the border width to 0.005. And now basically, as you can see, we created that check mark ourselves. The shape should be fine, but if you're not happy with either the position or the size, you can always adjust that right here. So here, for example, I might want to just lift that check mark a little bit more like that. And I'm happy with this. Now you might ask why I've duplicated the ellipse since we've already created the ellipse there. It's gonna make sense in a minute when we're gonna create the custom control. But basically right now the ellipse here is empty. And this one, we're gonna make an alteration here to the ellipse to make some space for the cross. So if I go to ellipse right there, and I'm adjusting here the lens to 0.85, I'm creating an opening right here. And then I can just basically move that opening with position and then let that check mark pass through. So here we're gonna put the position at 0 0.15. 
Now right now, if you want to keep everything white, it's fine and we can just move on. But if you want to make that check mark green, as you can see, we're gonna need to create another background. Cause here, if we go to the background and we try to just change the color, as you can see, it's affecting both the circle and the check mark. So right now what we need to do is bringing a new background in, unlinking here the polygon and instead linking it to that new background so we can adjust the color individually. Then here I'm gonna unlink that background and I'm gonna link the output of background three to background two, creating a merge and then linking the output of that merge to the merge in our main composition. And now with that background tree, we can go and just change the color to green. So here I'm just gonna select a green color Okay, just clean up a little bit like that. And now we can move on to the third one, which is the cross. So here I'm just gonna copy again my ellipse and my background. I'm gonna paste them down the line right here, make some space, and then here create the cross with a new background and a rectangular mask. Here I'm gonna link the output of that background four to the background two, and then I'm gonna link the output of that merge to the merge in our main composition. Now to my viewer, I'm gonna bring here the merge so I can focus on what I'm doing specifically for that cross checkbox. The first thing I want to do is going to background and here I'm gonna change the color to red. Click OK. Then here in rectangle, I'm gonna put the corner radius at one and I'm gonna reduce the height to make basically a straight line. Something like 0.01 seems to be good in terms of thickness. It seems too much here about the thickness of our previous circle and about the thickness of our check mark. So here, I'm just gonna go back to that. We're just gonna reduce the width. Then we're gonna copy that rectangle and paste an instance right above it. Then we're gonna link the output of that background here to a rectangle gonna right click on the angle and then here we're gonna de-instance so we can adjust that value independently. Here we're gonna adjust the value to 90 degree. As you can see now it's just creating a plus sign but if we just lift everything and add a transform in between the background and the merge by hitting shift space and here searching for transform and we now adjust the angle to 45 we've basically created a cross sign. I'm now just gonna move that cross over in the circle and then I'm gonna reduce the size and we should be good. So now we're pretty much done with the structure. We've created an empty checkbox, a checkbox with a check mark in it, a checkbox with a cross in it, and then we have all text right here. Now in a minute, I'm gonna share with you to create a custom tool to easily switch between those different type of checkbox. But right now, if uh, that's a bit overwhelming to you and you're a beginner and you just want to use one kind, you can always just disconnect whatever branch and keep the one that you want. And that will be just completely valid as well, okay? Right now, we're just gonna make uh, the system a bit easier with a custom tool right here. But if that's too much to you, you can just do it like that. But right now, before doing that custom tool, I'm just quickly gonna share with you how to create the animation. So I'm gonna select my merge right here, hit shift space on my keyboard and bring a brightness node. And then hit shift space again and bring a transform node. Then here I'm gonna be at frame zero and drop a keyframe on the position. And then I'm gonna go to frame 25 and I'm just gonna move the position X to the left. So it's arriving here on the left of my screen. Then here I'm gonna select my brightness and contrast node. I'm gonna select the alpha channel and I'm gonna go at frame 12 and I'm gonna drop here a keyframe on the gain at one and I'm gonna go to frame zero and bring the gain down to zero. Then to smooth out that animation, I'm gonna go to the spline editor right here. I'm gonna use a trick that I like to use, which is to here select show only selected tool, which bring the keyframe only of the node that is selected. And here I'm just gonna select my transform, select all my point, hit S on my keyboard to smooth out those curves, then hit T to bring the easy in and ease out and bring the easy in at 100. And now we've basically created a simple animation. We can then create additional animation here for the checkbox if you want. So for example, here for the check mark, we can start by here animating the ellipse, for example. We're gonna go at frame 12, drop a keyframe here on the lens, and then we're gonna go to frame zero and bring the lens down to zero. And it's just gonna here, as you can see, create a circle animation for the checkbox. And then we're gonna animate the polygon by going over to the polygon, go to frame 25, here, drop a keyframe on the lens at one, and then go to frame 12 and bring the lens down to zero. Now, as you can see, there is still a little dot right here. If we zoom in, 
we can change that by here adjusting the border styles right now it's rounded we can just select flat and now it will disappear but as you can see it doesn't really match i think what we've created here with the circle so here i'm just going to go back to rounded and what i'm going to do instead is going here to frame 12 drop a keyframe on the level at one and then go just one frame backward at frame 11 and bring the level down to zero and now we've created our checkbox animation again i want to smooth those things out so i'm gonna select here my ellipse and then old command and select my polygon as well so they both show up here in my spline editor i'm gonna click zoom to fit here i'm gonna untick the level because i don't want to adjust the curve for the level i just want to adjust the lens for both of them and here i'm just gonna select all my point hit s on my keyboard and then bring the ease in at 100 and now we've just created our animation if you wish, we can do the same thing for the cross. So here I'm just gonna disconnect my check mark and I'm gonna connect my cross checkbox. And here I'm not even gonna do anything on the circle. I'm just gonna do something here on the transform. So I'm gonna go at frame 25, drop a keyframe on the size, and then go to frame 12 and bring the size down to zero. Then we're just gonna select those two points, hit S on our keyboard, and then bring the easy into 100. And now we have the same thing, but for the cross. Now let's just create that custom tool that will allow us to switch between the different checkbox very easily. So first thing we want to do is here, linking all our checkbox to our main composition, back to what it was at the beginning. I'm gonna select this merge right here, and I'm gonna hit shift space on my keyboard, search for custom and bring the custom tool node. Here, I'm gonna right click on the custom tool node and I'm gonna go over to edit control. It just prompt open that window and here we're gonna name the name of our control. So that's gonna be checkbox. We want the type to be a number, the page to be in the control. So here, as you can see, we have different page. Uh, by default, it was in user, which will just create a new page. But here we have the control page, which is the first one. And that's what we want. We're gonna then select multi-button control. Here, we're gonna select integer. We're gonna have a range from zero to two. And then here we're gonna add our checkbox in order. So the first one is empty. We're gonna click add. The second one is check. We're gonna click add. And the third one is cross. We're gonna click add. Here I'm gonna select a button and name and we're gonna enter okay. And as you can see, we've created that brand new control checkbox with empty, check and cross. But as you can see, when I toggle each one of them, there is nothing happening. It's because we're gonna need to connect them with an expression. So what we're gonna do is that here, we're gonna bring a brightness and contrast node for each one of those boxes. So let's start with the first one. Hit shift space on the keyboard, search for brightness, bring the brightness and contrast node, select here the alpha channel, and then we're simply gonna copy that brightness and contrast, go to our second box here with the merge and then paste it. And then we're gonna go to the last box and do the same thing. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna link with a simple expression, that custom tool to each one of those opacity control that we're gonna create. So basically whenever we have empty selected, we'll have this one being at opacity one and those two being at opacity zero. So that's the only one that's gonna show. Then when we have the check selected, this one gonna be at opacity zero and this one gonna be at opacity one and that's the only one that's gonna show. And same thing here for the cross. First here for convenience, I'm gonna rename my custom tool node by right clicking on it and going to rename and we're gonna just do C1. It's easier to have something short for writing expression. You'll see that in a second. Now let's just open a bit more inspector and pin that custom control. So it's always in our inspector and go to our first brightness and contrast node to write that expression. Here, I'm gonna right click on the gain and we're gonna select expression. This part might be a bit overwhelming for people if you're not familiar with expression, but I assure you there is nothing too complicated and you can just replicate exactly what I'm writing uh, to get the same result. But I'm gonna try to explain you how it works so it makes a bit more sense. So I'm gonna open my expression with if, so I, I, F, then open parenthesis, then the name of my node control, so C1 right there, then dot, and I'm gonna write checkbox for the parameter within that node. So here, checkbox. So that basically telling DaVinci Resolve to look that if the node C1 with parameter checkbox is equal to empty, so I'm gonna do 
equal equal and empty here in that case will be zero check will be one and cross gonna be two so here if checkbox is zero so empty then we're gonna add a comma for then i want to have the gain at one then i'm gonna add another comma for another then if that's not the case i want that to be at zero and then close the parentheses and end of the expression so that might be a lot let me try to re-explain that quickly basically right now what we're saying to davinci resolve is that if or not c1 the value of the checkbox is empty so here meaning at zero we want the gain of this parameter to be at one so basically having the opacity at one so this is visible and then if that's not the case we want it to be at zero so basically opacity at zero and not be visible i hope that makes sense now let's just write the second one here basically to save us time we're just going to copy that expression because it's pretty much going to be the same we're just going to change one value we're going to go over to brightness then here we're going to right click in the gain go to expression then here paste that expression and we're just going to modify it for when the value here is on the checkbox so here same thing if the value of the checkbox is at one so here on check so we're going to just need to change that value from zero to one then we want the opacity to be at one otherwise we want it to be at zero and then we're going to do the same thing here for the last one we're going to right click on gain expression paste that expression and then this one it's going to be cross so that's number two so we want to replace here this zero with number two all right and now we're done now if i bring my media out here to the viewer and i'm starting to toggle between those as you can see now we're switching between empty check and cross now the cool thing is that this control that we created you can keyframe it meaning that you can switch here for example from empty to check uh, so here if we go to empty so right now the title is going to come empty and then if at frame 60 we want it to switch from empty to cross we can do that by here dropping a first keyframe on empty then moving one frame forward with our arrow key and then switching to check and now basically as you can see we have that quick animation going on from empty to check and that's pretty much it that's how to create that checkbox title in davinci resolve if you want to know how to export this as a macro i've made a video about this explaining you how to use the keyframe stretcher to make it work and be able to stretch it in the edit page and how to export each of those parameters so you'll be able to basically have access to that control that we've created here directly in the edit page and here for example uh, having access to the text i cannot explain that in every video because otherwise each video will be like 30 to 45 minutes but i've made a pretty comprehensive guide on how to do it so i will link to that in the description below now again if you like those kind of titles and you're using them constantly in your project i would recommend you to check out the pack that is available on our website about list and bullet points that contain a bunch of different checkbox uh, that you could use for your projects thank you very much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe let me know in the comment what kind of video you'd like to see next and see you in the next one bye Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transitions, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videoeditorstudio.com.